joining us for Bible study. We are back. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But we have certainly enjoyed the last three weeks of our spring revival. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so very much for your goodness and your grace toward us. Thank you for this opportunity to study your word. We pray now, God, that you will open up our hearts, our minds, and our souls, that this wonderful truth that you have just for us. We love you and we adore you in Jesus' name. And all those that believe said, amen. To God be the glory. So uh, last time, last time we met, last time we were uh, in Bible study, uh, the last week of April, we talked, we were in Ephesians chapter number five. Um, and we have referenced a scripture that was found in Luke chapter number 12, the parable of the rich fool. Jesus, um, in Luke chapter 12, verses 13 through 21, Jesus was telling them how it is with one stores of treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Greediness, okay? Um, because the man, the man in the parable uh, was doing very well with his land. And he said, well, I'm going to build some more barns so I can store up more stuff. And then God said, well, I'm about to, you know, I'm about to take your life tonight. So at the end of the day, if you build more barns, who's going to have that? Okay. Who's going to have what you store? And so uh, referencing the greediness uh, or the, the, the mention of greed that Paul talks about in Ephesians chapter five, uh, verse number three, that greed should not even be heard of among you, okay? Uh, that importance of greed. Um, oh, Lord have mercy, okay? I want to deal with another scripture that deals with this greediness and sexual immorality and things of that nature. Turn with me, if you would, before we go back to Ephesians chapter five, to Romans chapter number one. Okay, Romans chapter number one. Ooh, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Father, in my son, Jesus' name. Romans chapter number one. And while you're turning there, I'll just read um, verses one through three of Ephesians chapter five. We're going to come back to that in just a minute. But just to bring us up to speed as we keep going, um, Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 1, Therefore be imitators of God as dearly loved children and walk in love as Christ also loved us and gave himself for us a sacrificial and fragrant offering to God. But sexual immorality and any impurity or greed should not even be heard of among you as is proper for Saints, okay? Romans chapter number one. All right, Paul is talking to the church in Rome. Um, and in verse number 18, he deals with, uh, you start at verse number 18, the guilt of the Gentile world, okay? For God's wrath, Romans chapter number one, verse number 18. Hmm. For God's wrath is revealed from heaven against all godlessness and unrighteousness of people who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. Since what can be known about God is evident among them because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, that is his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen since the creation of the world being understood through what he has made. As a result, people are without excuse. You can't give an excuse and say, well, oh, no, God is powerful. No, you saw it from the beginning. He created the world. That, that, uh, uh, that you, you had come up with a better excuse than that if that's your excuse as to why you cannot serve God wholeheartedly. Verse number 21, Romans chapter 1. For though they knew God, they did not glorify him as God or show gratitude. Instead, their thinking became worthless and their senseless hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images 
resembling mortal man, birds, four-footed animals, and reptiles. Okay? In other words, they started worshiping uh, idols. Okay? And shade of glory and the mortal God for images resembling mortal man. Okay? They started worshiping idols. Images that resemble something else. Okay? No, you can't do that because at the end of the day, uh, God has called us to a higher position, okay? A higher place in the hill. Um, and it's interesting, at, before I keep going, before I go to verse number 24, it's interesting that when Paul is talking to the church of Rome, Paul does not pull any punches, okay? But it's important to understand who was in the church of Rome, who was in, you know, this Roman culture, if you would, they were the ones that were, you know, sophisticated. They had the degrees, the, the degrees, and not so much in theology, but they had degrees. They were, they were learned men. Okay, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. That, you know that phrase. Okay, the Romans had rule over everything, and so Paul was dealing with some very educated folks, and so this, um, this writing this um, letter, if you would, it could be seen as a dissertation that a, uh, you know, a person working on their doctoral degree would present or defend uh, at school because Paul uses the first few chapters to talk about, look, okay, this is the, you know, the divinity of God. This is, you know, everything you should be doing, okay? And then, in chapter number 12, he says, after I've told y'all all of this, therefore, brothers and sisters, in the view of the mercy of God, I urge you to present your body. In, in chapter 12, all the way to the end, he said, look, based on what I told you in the previous chapter, I need you to make sure you're concentrated on things you're uh, supposed to do. I say that to say, he, at chapter one, he talking about, look, y'all need to get yourself together. No, he can't use that as excuse. God had already showed his glory. He done showed it from the creation of the world. And look, you can't be worshiping idols. What is wrong with y'all? Because in the Roman culture, they were worshiping, you know, your Greek gods and things of that nature. They were like, you know, so we, we serve this Greek god and that Greek god, Zeus, I believe is Greek. Uh, and so mythical creatures. And he said, no, you can't be serving mythical creatures you got to serve the one and true living God. Sounds like today's time. We are dealing with people that are worshiping idols and images and things of that nature. And it's important that we tell them the truth. Look here. At the end of the day, I know what the world is telling you and set up the culture and, you know, you, you make more so you can, you, you, you have to work more so you can make more money and all that type of stuff. But our faith has to be found in God, okay? Now, relating this back to Ephesians chapter number five, all sexual immorality, any impurity, greed should not even be mentioned among you. Come back to Romans one, okay? First few ver the verses that I read, he's talking about, no, you can't worship those things. Verse number 24, Romans chapter number one. Therefore, God delivered them over in the desires of their hearts to sexual impurity so that their bodies were degraded among themselves, okay? In other words, you want to do life without me? You got it, okay? You, you, you want to try, yeah, you, you want to try to do life without me as God? <laughs> try it. Go ahead, try. I want to see if you can do it, okay? I want, I want to see if it is possible for you to function, if you for you to survive without me in your life. Verse number 25, they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served what had been, cre what has been created instead of the creator, who is praised forever. Amen. He said, here you go. You want to do it your way? Help yourself. Okay. Let me know how it works out for you. But help yourself. Verse number 26. 
For this reason, God delivered them over to disgraceful passions. Their women exchanged natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. Okay. The men in the same way also left natural relations with women and were inflamed in their lust for one another, men with men, women with women. Men committed shameless acts with men and received in their own person the appropriate penalty for their error. Okay? Broken homes, broken hearts, sexually transmitted disease, unplanned and unwanted pregnancies are all the fallout of letting lust rule instead of letting God rule. Paul said to the church in Ephesus and the surrounding area, he said, look, all that stuff, y'all gonna have to do away with that. Everything that is according to the flesh and lust. Verse number 28, Romans chapter one, and because they did not think it worthwhile to acknowledge God, God delivered them over to a corrupt mind so that yeah, so that they do what is not right. They are filled with all unrighteousness, evil, greed, and wickedness. They are full of envy, murder, quarrels, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, arrogant, proud, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, senseless, untrustworthy, unloving, and unmerciful. I'm at 21 now. All I'm at 21 things that he lives. Although they know God's just sentence that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but even applaud others who practice them. Oh my Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Good gracious of life, okay? You, you know, um, it's been said before many times, it's going to continue to be said until it ain't true anymore. And that is, it is so very interesting and sad at the same time to me how things of this world that used to be so wrong have now become so right. Society said, I don't know why you call it that wrong. That's all right. Yeah, do that, okay? Do, do that. that. That's cool. And, and you know, but but... It's like, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. What we were taught was right, was right, and it won't wrong. And and you know, people try to debate. Well, you know, you were um, religion was forced on you, and blah, blah blah blah. It's like, no, no, no. I understand at the end of the day that you know there are there are things that are in scripture. That I believe because they are scripture. And the end of that is the word of God. I believe. And then there are things that are just morally correct. They relate back to scripture. But y'all just call them morally correct. But what society has done because of our world, unfortunately, we have switched those two. The things that used to be right, okay, are now considered wrong. And you know, the things that are wrong are now considered right. And it's like, but wait a minute, I'm confused. I'm just so confused. This is the thing that gets me. And look, uh, for instance, let me be political, okay, for a moment. Uh, Roe versus Wade. The bank that, you know, law has been in place you know, years, Roe versus Wade, Roe versus Wade. Well, then when they decided, the Supreme Court decided, well, we're going to vote on it, okay? They voted and, you know, the decision was made, we're going to get rid of Roe versus Wade. Roe versus Wade been in existence, in the law for years, okay? Now, Roe versus Wade deals with uh, legal abortion, giving mothers the right to abort a baby. Now, I'm, I'm not going to give the, the scriptural reference. I'm not going to give my personal opinion. I, I'm just using this to show a point here, right and wrong. 
with that whole debate, Congress, Supreme Court, and others, mother shouldn't be allowed to kill a baby. Mother shouldn't be allowed to kill a baby. States, you know, different states have adopted, you know, no more abortion. No more abortion. Forget abortion because we want life. We want life for children. We want life for children. Okay, fine. And you pass a law. Been in effect for years. Saying that you're going to get rid of Roe versus Wade. And leave it up to the states to decide. But the problem I have with that, y'all, is as easy as it was for y'all to vote on Roe versus Wade and to push for it to be abolished and give it up to the states and all of that, and your know, abortion right bills and all of that, as easy as that was, why are we still dealing, why are we dealing with it in the first place? Shootings, mass shootings, in schools and malls and other pub and grocery stores and other public places, as easy as it was for you to pass laws for abortion rights and all of that, y'all don't think that this is important. I'm com I'm confused. This is and one of the reasons, main reason why I'm confused is because. Back in the day, back in the day, those of y'all that are more seasoned than I am, you had, uh, what was it, the nuclear bomb drills in your school? Those of y'all that are much more seasoned, you had nuclear bomb drills because, you know, the world's being bombed and things of that nature. They were like, well, we're going to have to have these drills to make sure that if a, you know, a bomb comes, you'll know to hide up under the desk and all that type of stuff. Then time went along, it was like, okay, we don't need to do those drills anymore. We started having fire drills, okay? You know, back in the 70s and 80s, and even when I was coming along in the 90s, we had fire drills at school. It was customary. You had a fire drill. The reason why you had a fire drill was because just in case a fire broke out at school, you had to, you know, you had to be cautious. You had to take cover and all that type of stuff, okay? Um, then we would have tornado drills. We would line up in the hallway on the floor, bend over. Man, it would be hot and people would be stinking and all that type of stuff, but we were practicing the tornado drill because there were instances where, you know, real life occurrences where tornadoes had, you know, come while children were still in school. It was unsafe to go home, stuff like that. So we were doing tornado drills, okay? That was customary. 1999 had Columbine High School. Uh, boys go into the school, shoot up the school, okay? After, after Columbine High School, they said, okay, we need to take more preventative measures uh, to, for school safety and things of that nature. We started seeing school resource officers in school and things of that nature. Most of the time, it was just at high school, okay? But I never had to do a school shooting drill. I didn't have to do a school shooting drill. Children now have to do a school shooting drill because of the mass shootings that we are having almost every single week in America. If we would go back, first of all, we would go back to the word, all our problems would be solved. Second of all, if we would go back to the time where we were teaching our children moral values, scriptural values, that just because you don't like a person does not mean that you just go buy a gun and you, you know, go shoot up everybody. No, 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 no. You, you know, we, we've got to stop taking measures in our own hands. And if y'all were that adamant about Roe versus Wade and abortion laws and all that type of stuff, somebody please explain to me why we still dealing, excuse me, with mass shootings and gun laws that have not been passed, okay? 
I understand from a political point of view is, you know, lobbyists and, and, and endorsements and sponsorships from different groups and things of that nature. That's not my point. My point is that we need to do a better job of getting back to what is right is right and what is wrong is wrong. At the end of the day, and stop mixing the two, switching the two. Oh, it's okay. You go buy a gun. Oh, it, it's okay that you ain't got no permit. No, 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 no. It ain't okay. Because if that was the case, then we would have been dealing with this stuff years ago. But we had things in place that prevented this these types of things of happening. Even back closer to home. Excuse me. Somebody tells you, well, it's okay to tell a little lie every now and then. And today it's like, yes, it's cool. Back in the day, uh-uh, you couldn't even say the word lie. Come on here now. I don't know, you know, depending on how y'all raise in, most of us, we you couldn't even say the word lie. You couldn't tell nobody they were a lie. They were a liar. I had explained it to the thing one day. I said, look, you got to stop calling your brother a liar. I get, it's not that he tells lies every single day. You got to stop calling him a liar. He told a lie. But he's not a liar. A liar is a person that habitually lies. They lie all of the time. Okay. Now, I, I you know, if I tell a lie, that doesn't make me a liar. It just makes me I told a lie. And so, I, and I, I told the guy, I said, "Look, get quicker." He was like, "He's a liar." No, 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 no. He told a lie. Yes, he told a lie. But he doesn't tell lies every single day, son. He doesn't tell lies every time he talks to you. You need to, you know, address it for what it is, okay? And and so I, I said all that to say, and I know I got off on a tangent, but the importance of it is to understand Paul was talking to the church of Rome and telling them, look, if you want to try to do life without God, you try it. And he's going to allow you to be turned over to yourself and you and you may not be filled with all of these things, but you are filled. That what He said, I'm going to name these things so they hit you where you are. I, I, I'm going to try to hit you where you are. Okay. I, I, what I got, the 21 that he listed, unrighteousness, evil, greed, wickedness, envy, murder, quarrels, deceit, malice, gossip, slanders, God hater. Arrogant, proud, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, senseless, untrustworthy, unloving, unmerciful. He said, look, not look. And the sad thing is, verse number 32, when folks do wrong and then we applaud them. Boy, that was, that was great that you, you were wrong. No, no, that was not great. We got to address the sin. We got to address the fact that that wasn't great. No, God ain't pleased with that. God, God not pleased with you sinning and doing wrong. No, that's wrong. Okay? That, 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 no, 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 no. That's wrong. And we've got to address the sin. we got to address the sin and love the person. Oh, man. Oh, man. Address the sin, but we got to love the person. we got to love a person. What happens a lot of times is that as we are addressing the sin, we start bashing the person. Ah, you know you were wrong. Blah, 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 blah. No, no. We got to address the sin by showing them the truth of God's word and loving them at the same time. Look, I, look, what you did was wrong, but let me tell you why it was wrong. Let me show you why it was wrong. Let me love you even through the wrong. Look, <laughs> all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But at the end, and, and because we've all seen and come short of the glory of God, God has given us grace. He's given us the opportunity to repent. And so turn back to Ephesians chapter number five. In verse number three, he said all of that stuff shouldn't even be heard of, shouldn't even be named among you. Don't allow yourself to be associated with sexual immorality, impurity, and, or, or greed. Uh -uh, don't, don't put yourself in a predicament where when somebody sees you, they say, huh, there they go, that one there again that we're dealing with all that stuff. 
or or if, ooh, that's a greedy person right there. Good Lord, of every time I turn around, they just as greedy as I don't know. That Paul said, "No, that stuff should not even be named among you." Why, Paul? Verse number one: Because you are imitators of God. You are walking in the love as Christ has loved us and gave Himself up the sacrificial and fragrant offering. But then he goes on, like he did in Romans chapter one. In verses uh, 29 through 31, he said, look, at the end of the day, there's some other stuff that you need to be aware of. Just like he said in chapter number four, Ephesians chapter five, verse number uh, four, obscene and foolish talking or crude joking are not suitable, excuse me, are not suitable, but rather giving Thanks. Okay? You really want to please God? Uh, yeah. If you really want to please God, you got to be set apart. And at the end of the day, all that obscene, foolish talking, cruel joking you do, he said, no, you need to be giving thanks. Remember, he said earlier that whatever you say needs to uh, be done with grace. Uh, showing great gives grace to those that hear it in Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 29. No foul language should come out of your mouth, only what is good for building up someone in need, so that it gives grace to those who hear it. In the same way, in verse number 4, Ephesians chapter 5, he said, Look, all that other stuff, no, you need to be giving thanks so that whoever hears you, they will give thanks to God as well. They would be grateful to God as well. He said in verse number five, Ephesians chapter five, for know and recognize this. He said, huh, I want to show you something here. Every sexually immoral or impure or greedy person who is an idolater does not have an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Paul wrote it. I didn't write it. Y'all wrote it. Y'all read it. Paul wrote that. He said, look, uh-uh. No, 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 no. You think you're going to get the head? You think you're going to inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God? No, you can't get that. And you practicing that stuff that you practicing? You sexually immoral, you're impure, you're greedy, you're, you're greedy, you're an idolater? No, you can't inherit the kingdom and not just the kingdom of Christ but the kingdom of Christ and of God, okay? Because they are, uh, it's God's son. He said, you've got to be set apart. You've got to be set apart. And we've got to see sin as putting us in a place where we're not set apart anymore. Yes, we all sin. But what, what God has called us out of is that habitual sin, that life of sin. Yes, we're going to fall. Yes, we're going to stumble and things of that nature. But he's calling us out of that habitual need, making it a habit and a practice and a routine that we commit every single day of our lives. No, you got to quit that. You got to stop that stuff. You have got to make yourself, you got to put yourselves in a position. We've got to put ourselves in a position individually and as a church that we are sharing the light with others, sharing Christ with others. Don't, don't, uh, uh, don't be embarrassed, be, be embarrassed, but don't try to put away what you used to do. I, no, I don't want nobody to know that side of me. No, people need to know that side of us because they need to know that was the side of me, but God has turned my life and now there's a new side of me. I'm not that person anymore. Now, there are times where we're tempted to go back to that person, but no, we, we can't go back fully to that person, okay? I said this before, you know, that old phrase, you're going to make me lay down my religion. No, 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 no. Anybody can lay down a religion, but you can't lay down a lifestyle. Oh, Lord Jesus. That's why I love Christianity, because Christianity is not just another religion. It is a lifestyle, okay? It is a lifestyle that uh, that I'm following after Christ. I don't know, you know, 
Yes, I'm going to fall along the way, but I'm following after Christ. And so I'm not going to lay down my religion. Lord, you're you going to have to help me so that I don't put myself in a position to be uh, called a non-child of God. I don't put myself in a position where I make folks question you question what you have done, question the things that you have done in my life, what you have done in my heart, okay? Now, move to verse number six. Let no one deceive you with empty arguments, <laughs> for God's wrath is coming on the disobedient because of, this, of these things, the sons of disobedience. Let no one deceive you with empty arguments, arguments that have no sense. Ain't nobody got time for them, okay? Turn with me, if you would, real quickly, back to Romans, and then we're going to stop here. Romans chapter number two. And note, Romans chapter two is at the end of what we read in um, in Romans chapter 1. When he says, I gave that to them, okay? Romans chapter 2, that, verse number 1, Therefore, every one of you who judge who judges is without excuse. For when you judge another, you condemn yourself. Since you, the judge, do the same thing. No one can judge but God. We know that God's judgment on those who do such things is based on the truth. Do you really think any one of you who judges those who do such things yet do the same that you will escape God's judgment? Oh, yeah, God's gotcha. right. Okay. Uh, verse number four. Or do you despise the riches of his kindness, restraint, and patience? not recognizing that God's kindness is intended to lead you to repentance. Grace only lasts for a moment. Look, <clears throat> don't take his kindness for weakness. Don't take his restraint for he ain't gonna ever uh, punish. And don't take his patience for a uh, 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 free excuse pass. Verse number five, because of your hardened and unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself in the day of uh, wrath when God's judgment is revealed. He will repay each one according to his works. Eternal life to those by persistence in doing good, seek glory, honor, and immortality, but wrath and anger to those who are self-seeking and disobey the truth and disobey the truth while obeying unrighteousness. My goodness, y'all, we all out of time. I pray you join us next week. Y'all know that next week is the last day of the month of May. We're getting ready to go into June, y'all. Lord have mercy. Jesus, I pray that you will join us. You'll have the opportunity to join us right here at 7 o'clock p.m. as we pick right back up in Ephesians chapter 5, verse number six. This coming Sunday morning is the fourth Sunday of the month. It is also Memorial Day weekend. We invite you to come uh, in person or online at 1045 a.m. as we worship the Lord uh, together. And we also um, you know, say a special prayer and thank God for all those that have gone on before us but served in our armed forces. We thank them, we, we, we thank God for allowing them to serve and we honor and remember their memory and their, uh, their service to our country. Amen. Father, we thank you so very much for your goodness and your grace. Thank you, Lord, for your word and reminding us so very much, Lord, reminding us of how important it is 
to seek after your way. God, we thank you so very much for being so kind. I pray that you would continue to bless us and keep us from all hurt, harm, seen and unseen danger, God. I pray that you would continue to provide everything that we need, that, Lord, we will be eternally grateful for all of what you do in our lives. Father, bless our children that have uh, taken exams, that are getting ready to start taking exams, particularly EOGs, EOCs, final exams. I pray that you will bless them, give them the strength that they need to finish this year strong in the name of Jesus. And those, Lord, that are now on break uh, from school, I pray that you continue to keep their mind, to continue to keep them covered in the name of Jesus. Lord, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray, can every single thing done and all those that believe say, amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born with his spirit. Lost in his love. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long.